Sige, let's read this together, ha? Kulbaan, tagamayda. Sige, Proverbs chapter 1, verse, chapter 6, verse 1 to 19, okay? 1, 2, 3, read. My son, if you have put up security for your neighbor, have given your pledge for a stranger. If you are snared in the words of your mouth, caught in the words of your mouth, then do this, my son, and save yourself, for you have come into the hand of your neighbor. Go hasten and plead urgently with your neighbor. Give your eyes no sleep, your eyelids no slumber. Save yourself like a gazelle from the hand of the hunter, like a bird from the hand of the fowler. Go to the ant, O sluggard, consider her ways and be wise. Without having any chief, officer, or ruler, she prepares her bread in summer and gathers her food in harvest. How long will you lie there, O sluggard? When will you arise from your sleep? A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest, and poverty will come upon you like a robber and want like an armed man. A worthless person, a wicked man, goes about with crooked speech, winks with his eyes, signals with his feet, points with his finger. With perverted heart, devices evil, continually sowing discord. Therefore, calamity will come upon him suddenly. In a moment, he will be broken beyond healing. There are six things that the Lord hates, seven that are abomination to him. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue, a hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plan, feet that make no haste to run to evil, a false witness who breathes out lies, and the one who sows discord among brothers. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you, Lord, for your presence with us tonight. Lord, we pray that you allow your word, O God, to be preached with clarity and anointing, Lord, tonight, O God. We believe that your word will bring forth blessing upon our lives. Holy Spirit, have your way in our midst, Lord. May you anoint my lips of clay, O God. And we humbly ask, Holy Spirit, that you may be the one, Lord, to minister to each and every heart that is here tonight, O God. And so, Father, we pray that you allow your word to be delivered with power right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Laina sa feeling makuratan ka Okay? Now, guys, the passage we will be studying tonight is very practical and straightforward. And the beautiful thing about the thing that we're going to study tonight is that as we go through it, we will learn a lot of values and principles, no? Values that we can really apply in our daily lives and principles that will help us navigate the complexities of life, no? And the beauty of Proverbs is really that, no? The bad Proverbs is like a manual for life. It's like an instruction guide on how we are to behave and conduct our affairs that we may glorify God and succeed in life. Now, how many of you here want to succeed in life? Oh, see, gamay raman. <laughs> anyway, Proverbs really help us, no, to, it, 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 it equips us, it informs us how we are to glorify God and how we are to conduct the affairs in our daily life. Now, in our family business right now, we are in the process of restructuring our family business. We are restructuring it from a family-managed business into professionalizing our business. And for us to achieve this goal, we needed to hire consultants. And guys, mind you, these consultants, these people, these brilliant people, they don't come in cheap. No, if I'm not mistaken, we spend hundreds and hundreds of thousands of pesos every month to pay these consultants. And we have to do this because that's the only way that we can reach our goal. That's the only way that we could, you know, arrive to our targets. And guys, what do these consultants do for us? They guide us, they teach us, and they impart to us their experiences in the industry. In other words, they're the one who will teach us what to do. They are the one who will give us new strategies, so on and so forth. Now, in other words, what these consultants do for us is that muras lag mga teacher, muras lag mga consultant, they give us advices. No? We are getting these people because of their wisdom. We are paying them so much because of their wisdom. No? So I hope you're now beginning to see nga unsa ni ka-importante ang wisdom. No? And my point, no, as over the years, as we, as we apply the principles and methods that our consultants have taught us, we have seen the growth of our company. 
we are still far from our target, we are still far from our goal, but year in, year out, as we apply the wisdom that our consultants have taught us, we can see really wonderful things that's happening in our company right now. Now, church, what's my point sharing this to you? Now, guys, you have to understand that these consultants that we have, they are just plain and ordinary people. But yet, they help us accomplish so many things. And the point is this, guys. Imagine for a moment having the wisest man who ever lived in the history of humanity to become your personal consultant. Imagine having the wisest man who ever lived in the history of humanity teaching you about the ways of life, teaching you about what you should do and what you should not do. Now, church, this will be our approach this passage for this passage tonight. We will listen to Solomon like a consultant unto us. We will heed the wise counsel of the wisest man who ever lived on the planet. And guys, you know what? Over the years, I've been in the ministry, I've been in our business. If there's one thing bang, I learn ko, it is very good to be in the company of wise people. It is very good to hear their ideas. It's very good to hear them out, to see how they do things. And how much more, unsa, how much more can we learn if we heed the counsel of the wisest man who ever lived in the planet, right? So guys, this will be our approach this, this, this evening as we go into God's word, listening and heeding the advice of King Solomon. Now, I've entitled to tonight's sermon, Avoiding Foolishness. Because this is what this passage is all about. It's about avoiding foolishness. And we have three points in our sermon today. Verse 1 to 5, it talks about debt and humility, no? utang and humility. Verse 6 to 11 talks about work and laziness. And verse 12 to 9, it talks about wickedness and its, and its consequences, okay? And as we go through these three points, we will unearth, we will discover so many principles, beautiful principles that we can apply in our daily life. So guys, as we go into God's Word, I hope we will listen to it with an open heart and an open mind. No? Libre ang tambag ni Solomon. Walay bayad, di pra ito mga konsultat na mo perting mahala. So guys, we might as well take advantage of it, okay? Okay, amen? Okay, point number one. Solomon teaches us about death and humility. Verse one. Solomon says here, My son, if you have put up security for your neighbor, have given pledge for stranger, okay? This is what Solomon says. Now here in verse one, Solomon warns us against guaranteeing or becoming a guarantor to another person's debt. Or in our modern day term, co-maker. No? Nga musaad ka nga kung di ni siya makabayad, ako ang mabayad. Now Solomon is warning us against being liable for the financial obligation of another. Now be it someone who's close to you, as what Solomon said, either it's your neighbor or a stranger, whether that person is close to you, a relative, a friend, a family, or a cousin, or someone who's not so close to you, a stranger, a colleague, or kanang kaila lang mo. Either or, Solomon says, it is highly unwise for anyone to guarantee someone else's debt. Now, question. Is Solomon encouraging us to be selfish? Is the Bible telling us not to help people in need? No? Now, in order for us to answer that question, we need to look up another verse so in order for us to put things into perspective and proper context. Now, Proverbs chapter 22, verse 26 to 27, I'll be reading from the NLT. If we have it on slide, can we flash it? Proverbs 22, verse 26 to 27, says here, don't agree to, ag don't agree to guarantee another person's debt or put up security for someone else. If you can't pay it, even your bed, will be snatched from you. Now guys, the phrase here, if you can't pay it, connotes two things. The first thing is, you can't pay the debt is because you cannot afford it. You don't have the resources to pay for that debt. No? In other words, di kakabayad, kaya wa kwarta. Di kakabayad because you don't have the resources to the debt that you guaranteed for. The second connotation is that you cannot pay it 
because you are unwilling to pay for it. Nagsakit ka. Now here, in, in, in Solomon says, even your bed will be snatched from you. Now, bed signifies rest and sleep. Now, this person, ni guarantee siya utang, he can no longer sleep. He can no longer rest properly because in his heart of hearts, he doesn't want to pay for his neighbor or his friend's utang. So, what, get what I'm saying? So, two things. You can pay the debt. It's either because you don't have the resources to pay for it or you are unwilling to pay for it. So, either of the two, Solomon tells us that it is unwise to pay, uh, it is unwise to guarantee for someone else's debt. On the other hand, on the other hand, if you can afford to pay for someone's debt and you are more than willing to pay for that person's debt, then by all means, go ahead. Be a guarantor. If your attitude is like this, ba, bro, ganahan ka mangutang, sige, pangutang dito, ako'y bayad. Di ka kabayad, o sige, ay kabala ka, ako'y bayad. No, unless that is that your attitude, no? Unless that is your attitude, then ayaw na lang pagtuga-tuga, pagkagarantor, no? Because Solomon says, unless that is your attitude, guaranteeing for someone else's death is a clear path to ruin. It's a clear path to destruction. And guys, the point is this. Uh, the point is simply this. The scripture is not encouraging us to be selfish. It's not encouraging us to be kanang dili mutabang with other people. But it is simply giving us a clear and fair warning against guaranteeing for someone else's debt. No? It's a fair and clear warning from scripture. Now, speaking about that, some years ago, while I was still a young Christian, my early discipler told me, he told me this, Jo, Christian na ganika, when you become a Christian, dili gun na kalikayan nga naimang utang ni mo. Why? Because people are expecting you to be nice because you are Christian. And he was speaking from his own experience. Now, he told me, from time to time, people actually come to me to borrow money. So what do I do? No, so I was thinking if this person is really in need and he needs so much money, for example, kung mangutang siya 1,000 pesos nako, and I really think that he could not pay me back because of his situation. So I will just tell him, bro, bro instead mangutang kag 1,000 pesos nako, na ako 500 pesos, ayaw na lang kong bayri ani. And his point was this, I'd rather happily lose 500 pesos helping a friend than angrily lose 1,000 kay di ko mabayran. And the point is simply this, guys. Be very discerning. Bring it to the Lord. Lift it up to the Lord in prayer when debt is involved, when utang is involved, okay? So verse number one, Solomon is giving us a clear and fair warning against guaranteeing someone else debt. Now number two, moving on in verse two, Solomon continues to say, if you are snared in the words of your mouth, if you are caught in the words of your mouth. Now here in verse 2, Solomon is telling us that the words that comes out of our mouth has the power to entrap us. Okay? The words that comes out of our mouth has the potential to bring us into danger. Now look at the words that King Solomon used here in verse 2. He used the word snared and caught. Now guys, these are the words used on animals that are being hunted for slaughter. No? Madakpan, matrap. No? This is the words that Solomon is using here. Now church, although the context of this verse is about the dangers of guaranteeing another person's death, but from this same verse, we can also learn that we must be very careful with the words that comes out of our mouth because the words that comes out of our mouth can actually lead us to danger. Now, just like this person here guaranteeing another person's death, equally dangerous is speaking careless words. Now, regardless if your words are being spoken in, in, in business transaction, in relationships, or whatever, careless words, no? Unthought of words can potentially lead you to harm. So guys, never promise something that you cannot fulfill. Or better yet, do not promise anything. 
Never say something that you do not have any intention on doing. Because doing so is a sure recipe for disaster. It can ruin your life just like this person being trapped in his, you know, in his, in his own words, no? And guys, more than guaranteeing ka ng a person's death ba, this verse also gives us an idea about integrity issue, no? That as people of God, you have to be a man of your word. No? What you mean what you say and say what you mean. Now guys, let me just tell you, there is nothing more turn off than a Christian na walay klaro ng ikasturya. No? Kanang liko-liko kay musturya, kanang dili black and white musturya. So more than about guaranteeing someone else that this here is also an issue of integrity. Now, some months ago, I was so proud to be associated with a Christian businessman. Christian businessman, no? He's well-respected in the Christian community. Ba? But yet, when I went to my father's house and when he learned that I was associated with this man, he immediately gave me a warning. Be careful of this guy because my friend was victimized by this guy. And my father-in-law said the same thing. Watch out. Don't be too close about with, with, with this guy. And guys, you know what? If you look at him, but yet there's an integrity issue behind it all. And again, there is nothing more turned off than a Christian that, does it, that, that just blatantly gives out careless word. No? Pataka lag sturiya ba? Walay word of honor. No? So, here, the Solomon's son, because of his careless words, he got himself into guaranteeing someone else's debt. No? Ni guarantee siya utang because of his careless words. And we don't know how big the utang was, but it must have been so big kay hasi si Solomon mismo naratul man siya. Okay? So, verse 3, Solomon now is giving an advice to his son on what he needs to do. Now, verse 3, Solomon says here, Then do this, my son, and save yourself, for you have come into the hand of your neighbor. Go hasten and plead urgently with your neighbor. So here in verse 3, we can see Solomon advising his son on how to get himself out of the trap that he set for himself. Now, his, his son, this foolish person, foolishly promised to pay the debt of another man. Now, if this person defaults, mapugos siyang bayad sa utang. Bisang katong utang, dili ito iyaha. Again, church, we don't know the amount of debt that this, the son of Solomon guaranteed on. But judging from Solomon's plea, it must have been very, very big. But regardless of the value, the, the passage seems to indicate that Solomon's son was in serious trouble. Solomon's son was in, 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 in a messy situation. Again, si Solomon mismo naratol good. So, me to say, dako dako din siguro niya nga utang, no? Nakibawon sa iyang guarantee, but this, surely, his utang, his guarantee to the utang put him in a very messy and terrible situation. So, here in verse 3, Solomon is teaching his son on how to get out from his messy situation, No? Uh, and I want us to read this verse right now in NLT version because I think the advice of Solomon to his son is clearly captured. The essence of Solomon's advice is clearly captured by the NLT version, okay? Now, let's read verse 3 in NLT. If we have it, can we flash it on screen? Now, this is Solomon's advice to his son who is in a messy situation. No, ingon siya. Ako lang basahon dere, wa man sa screen. siya. Follow my advice and save yourself. For you have placed yourself at your friend's mercy. Now, swallow your pride. Go and beg to have your name erased. So, advice this Solomon to his son who was in a terrible situation. Swallow your pride. So, what was Solomon's advice to his son who was in that terrible situation? Solomon's advice, Solomon's solution was humility. No? Humility. He was in that messy situation. He was in that terrible situation. And Solomon did not advise him, okay, this is what you do. Step one, step two. Okay. No. Solomon's advice was straightforward. 
Be humble. Practice humility. Now, many theologians believe that the possible reason for this person to guarantee another person's utang is boastfulness. No? Why else would he guarantee other person's utang? Now, we were saying, gusto ka, mangutang ka. Sige, pangutang dito. Ako'y bahala. Big time ang ko. No? I can afford. I am Solomon's son. Good. Sige, pangutang dito. Ako'y bahala. Limo. Theologians believe that maybe it was because of his pride, because siyang pagkagarboso, because siyang pagkahambugiro, nagpatuga-tuga siya, o guarantee. So his father now tells him, go humble yourself. If you want this issue settled, if you want to break free from this trap, be humble. Go and beg. Now Solomon is telling his son, uh, no, let go of your ego. Doola imong amigo dito, pagpakaluoy, kung mahimo dito, pagpakaluoy ayo. So just so that your name can be cleared out from this situation. Now church, what's true for Solomon's son is also true for each and every one of us. And by that I mean whenever we find ourselves caught in difficult situation, if ever we will be involved in messy situations, whether it be in business, in career, in any marital issues, in family, friendship, or ministry, you have to know this and embrace it by heart. That if you want to resolve things, the very first thing you need to do is you must be willing to humble yourself. Practice humility. In any issue, in any issue, the faster you humble yourself, the faster the situation can be resolved. Now, guys, mind you, this principle always works, especially when it comes to husband and wife. No? Magkunot na ganyan ang kilay ni Michelle, wa po kiba na suko siya, musori na lang ko daan. And it always works every time. No? And it's not just about any marriage, in, in church issues, in issues of friendship, in ministry, or whatever there is, there's conflict or there's anything that needs to be settled. If you know how to swallow your pride, if you humble yourself, then the faster the, the resolution will come. The faster the solution will come. And guys, humbling oneself shouldn't even be, you know, something for us. It should be a norm for each and every one of us because we are all Christians. In the first place, you can never be a Christian if you don't know how to humble yourself, right? So this thing should be a natural practice for us. No? We should know how to humble ourselves. Now maybe some of you here right now, maybe na ninyo dari karon, gidapipadamo dari sa ginoo, because maybe you have prevailing issues in your personal life right now that, you know, maybe you need to humble yourself. Maybe in order to reconnect with a friend, to re re reconnect with a spouse, or, or, or any, any issue right now that you're going through. Again, humbling oneself is key to, you know, resolving things. And there's actually no shame in humbling oneself, guys. Sa una, hambugiro mag yuko, braman ko ang anak ni Solomon, but slowly, surely, by God's grace, as I learned how to become humble, di ko masulting humble ko kaya humble naman na di ba? So as as I practice the, the 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 principles behind humility, ba, I can really see things getting better, better in 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 every facets of life. Okay, so that was solution. That was the solution of Solomon for his son that was caught in the trap of his own words. Now, okay. Now, moving on, verse 4 to 5. Solomon continues to tell his son, Give your eyes no sleep and your eyelids no slumber. Save yourself like a, like a gazelle from the hand of the hunter, like a bird from the hand of fowler. So here in verse 4 and verse 5, Solomon is urging his son to settle his issues immediately. He's telling his son not to procrastinate or rationalize. No? Here, Solomon uses a, a metaphor of animals being caught, a gazelle and a bird. Kung madakpan ganin ng mga langgam, if madakpan ganin ng gazelle, whenever they are in the trap, they will always do everything in their might. No? They will not stop moving until they break free from the trap. Now, Solomon is giving his son this metaphor. 
that as long as you have issues to settle, as long as you have matters that you need to make right, don't sleep, ayaw slumber, ayaw procrastinate, don't rationalize on things, but do it immediately. Do it immediately. Ayaw pagdugay-dugay. No? And guys, again, let us heed the counsel of the wisest man who ever lived. If there are anything in your life that you need to settle right now, don't procrastinate. Don't rationalize. No? If you need to settle on something, settle it immediately. Do it right immediately. Okay? So that's Solomon's advice. Now moving on, verse 6 to 11, Solomon now shifts his focus from, from pride and death to work and laziness. Now, after giving his son this advice, he now turns to the lazy people. He is now giving him this, this advice or this counsel. Okay, verse 6 to 8, Solomon says, Asamanta. Okay, verse 6. Solomon tells the sluggard, he says here, Go to the ant, O sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise. Without having chief, officer, or ruler, she prepares her bread in summer and gathers her food in harvest. Now church, what is a sluggard? A sluggard is someone who is lazy. Mga tapulan, no? A sluggard is someone that's unproductive and irresponsible. There's a quote that says, Lazy people are irresponsible, and irresponsible people are lazy. Now guys, this quote perfectly describes what a sluggard is. Irresponsible and lazy people. Now here in verse 6, Solomon counsels the sluggard. He tells them, Uy, kamo mga tapulan ba? Kamo mga wala gyoy nabuhat sa kinabuhi? Why don't you go to the ant? And learn from the ant. No? Ikaw, dako kay kaglawas, gamay ka ng kulmigas, at tuan at dito, and learn from them. No? So guys, as I was studying this passage, I was also wondering, kung saan may nasulmigas? No? What's with the ant? Now guys, you know what? A quick Google search will tell you so many fascinating things about ants. And indeed, we can truly learn a lot from them. I'm not a sluggard, or I, I like to believe I'm not a sluggard, but as I was looking at the fascinating traits of the ant, ba? Nga, bitaw, Solomon, no? Sakto yung ka. No? So let's go through some, let's, quickly, let's go through some fascinating uh, on some mga traits sa ants. Why did Solomon tell this unproductive and lazy people to go learn from the ants? On some naasa ant? Well, number one, I've learned that ants are well organized. Okay? They are very well organized. Now, in an ant colony, each ant has a specific job. They are so well organized that each of them, they carry out their task through divisions of labor. And if you go to the ant colony, mas katag pa siguro ang kwarto sa kung anak ng lalaki kaysa colony sa ant, it's well arranged. Asa ilang larva na adito, asa dapit ilang queen. Na they are very well organized creature. And guys, listen to this. At the end of the day, nothing is left undone in their colony because each and every ant do their job. They are very well organized. Ants are well organized creatures. Now, guys, over the years of doing business, meeting many different people, I have seemed to notice that rich and successful businessmen are well-organized people. I begin to notice ba nga, maoman ilang common denominator, oh? They are very well-organized. Their time management, grabe kaayo. Ilang, ilang the way they do things, their week, their day is really planned out and they are well-organized. Ilang buhok, organized po kaayo, no? Ilang hitsura, organized kaayo. And, you know, it came to me that actually success, if you want to be successful, then you have to be organized as well, no? And the point is this, if you want to improve further in life, if you are unproductive right now, if you have, you know, if you consider yourself sluggard or if you just want to improve in your life, then start organizing things properly. 
No, like th this is something that we can learn from an ant. Okay, number two, ants are busy creatures. They are very busy, and you know the ants are tireless. They are busy all day long. However, unlike many individuals, ants are busy doing something that's productive. No, they are busy doing something that's productive. Now, you have to understand that being busy alone is not enough. You have to ask yourself, unsa may na-accomplish sa imuhang pagkabisi? No? Is it another Netflix movie that's done? Is it another TikTok na nasundog ni mo? Or is it another thing that you watch in YouTube? Now, guys, you have to understand, just like the ants understand it, time is very important. No? It's one thing to be busy but walay output. It's another thing to be busy but you, your business produces something productive. So we can learn this from the ants. No? Wise gini mga ants, pero mas wise si Solomon. Okay, kibaw masyani butanga. No? I, I wonder how Solomon knew all these kinds of things. I wonder why Solomon didn't say, oh, you lazy person, go learn from the giraffe or go learn from the elephant. Ngano ant man yud? Yes, it gives you kanang mamarbal lang ka ba? Grabe good ang power sa God's word, no? no? Before, there was no microscope. But yet, Solomon knew all these things. That just gives us an idea of how great our God is. Amen? Now, another trait of an ant is that an ant, they are persistent creatures. They are very persistent. Whenever you put an obstacle in the way of the ant, they will find another way to accomplish their task. No, They will find ways. They don't give up so easily in the face of obstacle. They soldier on. They never give up. And the point is this. If you want to be productive in life, expect many, many obstacles that will come your way. You have to understand that there are no shortcuts to productivity. Now, the moment you want to achieve something in life, the moment you want to excel on something, guys, expect that there will be many, many, many obstacles that will come to you. But let us heed the counsel of King Solomon. He says, let us learn from the ant. Be persistent. In other words, no retreat, no surrender. No pain, no gain, diba? Kung sikyo, no ID, no? Daghag sikyo dere. So we have to be persistent. Just like Solomon says, let's learn from the way of the ant. No? And another trait of the ant is that, listen to this, guys. Ants have amazing sense of discipline. They are very disciplined creatures. In verse 7, Solomon says, ants don't have officers, ruler, or chief, but yet they perform their duties regardless. Walay mo sugo nila, walay mo bantay nila, wala sila supervisor, but yet what they're supposed to do, they do. They perform their task without anyone supervising them. Now, discipline among the ants is a, you know, it's truly a marvel of nature. Each and every ant religiously performs her task without anyone supervising. And this is too opposite of what a sluggard is, diba? I mean, what's the difference between a sluggard and, and, and a productive person? You know, sluggards carry this undisciplined, happy-go-lucky, go-with-the-flow type of attitude. Oh, come what may, walay gana, walay motivation, walay anything. And, you know, the difference between a sluggard and a productive person is that a sluggard always finds reason not to work. No, gamay lang nga rason, Napakaghulmigas, di indahin mo trabaho. No? But a productive person, a productive person takes every opportunity to accomplish whatever he or she is working on. So guys, let's learn the way of the ant. And lastly, no, lastly, another trait of the ant is ma-surprise mo ani, ants are great planners. They plan. No, lupigan ko sulmigas da. And are great planners. In verse 8, Solomon says, She prepares her bread in summer and gathers her food in harvest. It is astonishing to know that ants literally save up for winter. No? When winter comes, the ants have stored enough food in their colony. That during winter, 
no ant is in luck because they have worked all summer long, stuff ilang colony. Di good sila magutman during winter. So ants plan ahead. Ants know how to plan. So when they work, they don't only work for the present, but they think ahead of the future. Ants are great planners. Now guys, every time we have our deacons meeting, Brother Bill always reminds the team. No? He always says, if we fail to plan, we are planning to fail. So guys, honestly, I'm not a planner myself. But I mean, planning is not one of my strengths. But as I was studying this, Ingoman Solomon, we learned from the ant. So let's, paminaw na to Solomon. And so, sugot ka magplano na ta. If we want to improve in life, magplano plano kinta hai. Adi plano yung natin, no, di kinta hai, magplano na ta, no? Because as Solomon says, we have to learn from the ants, okay? Now, continuing, let's go back to our passage. Uh, Solomon tells the sluggard, go learn from the ants. And then he gives the sluggards this warning. How long will you lie there, O sluggard? When will you arise from your sleep? A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of hands to rest. And poverty will come upon you like a robber and want like an armed man. Now here in verse 9 to 11, Solomon is telling the sluggard to stop rationalizing and procrastinating. He's telling them, guys, there's work that needs to be done. Now here in verse 9 to 11, Solomon was trying to get into the mind of the sluggard. No? Little rest, little sleep, little folding of hands. Now maybe to the sluggard, but wala rana paraniya. What is another one hour of sleep? What is another one hour of folding my hand? No, what is another kuan, another hour of ko, bahala mo manarbaho mo diha. No, paraniya, maybe to him, it's just nothing. But yet Solomon says otherwise. In verse 11, Solomon said, Poverty will come upon you like robber and want like an armed man. Now church, the Bible tells us that poverty will come upon a lazy man. And it will come upon him suddenly and quickly without warning. And all of a sudden, this lazy man will be in great luck. Manginang lang siya pag ayo, but wa nagyud siya magamit. Pero, you know, shame will follow after that. So, guys, let's heed the warning of King Solomon. Let us get rid of the habit of rationalizing and procrastinating. There is work that needs to be done. So, let's learn from the way of the ant. Okay? Now, moving on. Verse 12 to 15. In verse 1 to 5, Solomon was talking, talking about, uh, about a foolish and boastful person. Verse 6 to 11, Solomon was addressing the sluggards. Now here in verse 12 to 15, Solomon now turns his attention to a wicked and worthless man. Tao kuno nga salbahis. Tao nga wicked. Makakasala. Now here in verse 12 to 13, Solomon describes to us the traits and character of a wicked man. Now, here in verse 12, Solomon says, A worthless person, a wicked man, goes about with a crooked speech. Now, guys, one clear trait of a wicked man is a crooked speech. Now, what is a crooked speech? It's the art of masterfully covering lies. No, these types of people, they don't lie to you out flat. They twist words, they mince words, they make up stories so that what they say may sound so true. But yet, in the heart of hearts, they are serial liars. No? Kabi kayo, one trait of kaning wicked person is kanang expert kayo mamakak. They are so expert in lying that when you talk to them, you don't have any clue that they are lying. That's what a crooked speech is all about. Now, a sample of this is a cheating spouse. Mananghid sa asawa, han, mag team building sa ko. Pero galing di ay, team building in a very wrong place. No? A sample of this is a cheating spouse. A husband or even a wife 
can lie to the skin of their teeth to cover up their infidelities. And guys, this is very rampant. Or maybe to an unscrupulous trader, kana mga negosyante nga mga mangingilad, promising their client, no, nga mura na makabot ang buwan, mura na makabot ang moon, to just to get the sale, to close the contract, they give many false promises. No? Crooked speech. This is one indicator of a of a wicked person. No? Grabe, expert kaayo, pamakak. Verse 13, Solomon says, a wicked man winks with his eyes, signals with his feet, and points with his finger. Now, these gestures in verse 13, they are depiction of a wicked man's action. Now, a wicked man are skillful deceivers. They go around victimizing people. Their consciences are so callous that they have no remorse for their actions. Oh, asalay paking, adaghan silang masakitan. Oh, asalay paking, adaghan silang mailad. For as long as they get what they want. For as long as they accomplish their own agenda. So there are many people who are like this. Now, verse 14. Solomon continues to say, their perverted heart devises evil, continually sowing discord. In si Solomon, ilahang heart, they plan out evil. No? In other words, their heart is like a factory of sin. Ngamura siya, nagplan out ug evil ba? Guys, you know what? For a moment, I want us to focus on what Solomon said here in verse 14. He said, a wicked man's heart plans out evil. His perverted heart plans out evil desire. So Solomon was like saying, ang mga sala ani nga tawhana is that they planned it out. It's not accidental sinning, quote unquote, but they are really well planned evil schemes. No? Now, church, as I was preparing this sermon, it also dawned onto me that verse 14 is actually a wise indicator for the people who are in church. It's a good way to examine yourself if you're a true follower of Christ or not. Because a true follower of Christ can never plan out sinful things in his or her life. A true follower of Christ can never premeditate on sin. Now, what am I saying? If you're a true blue, genuine born-again Christian, you will never have this wicked man's action. No, you will never plan on next week, Friday, maghubog-hubog kay Friday, swildo pag Or you can never plan in your heart, if minyo na ka, uy, guapa lagi ning bayhana, magpakyut ko be. No? You will never be able to afford to do those things in your heart. Tomorrow, I have a business meeting Magandam na ko unsa kong ipang ilad ani tawhana. A true genuine Christian can never have a wicked man's heart. Again, as I was meditating on this verse, somehow the Lord imparted to my heart that this is actually a very good bar or mirror for us people in church to examine ourselves. Do we have any cherished sin in our heart? Do we have that habitual sin that we keep on committing over and over and over and over again? Now guys, let me give you an illustration. Yes, a Christian is not sinless, at least on this side of eternity. Every now and then, a Christian may fall. No, Every now and then, a Christian can fall. But a true Christian can never afford to plan out evil things in his or her heart. Now, let me give you an illustration. As a Christian, while you walk in this life, it is possible madagma ka. It is possible that you fall to sin as you follow the Lord. Pero lahi na po na siya kung magtambling-tambling o magigigid-ligid na lang yung kagtuyo. No? Because a true believer, you will never be comfortable with sin in your life. Now, Solomon says, wicked men, they devise they plan out evil in their heart. Ilang giplano, ilang mga sala, asa ka ana. Now another thing, Solomon continues to say, this, this wicked people, these sinful people, they don't only plan evil in their heart. 
they, all, they also continually sow discord. No, ganahan sila ng mag-away mga tao. No, another clear trait of a wicked man is that they don't have any regard for unity. He doesn't care if families will be broken. They don't care if friendships will be broken. They don't care if churches will be broken. They, they go around, you know, kanang sila care ba na, na mag-away ang mga tao tungkod nila, mag-away ang simbahan tungkod nila for as long as they have their selfish agendas done. So what these people do is that they plant lies here and there so that, you know, people would quarrel and they would be able to have their agenda. Whether it's their lustful intentions, whether to get money, power, or fame, they don't care about the mess that they're going to make in an organization, in church, in family, for as long as they will be able to accomplish their sinful agenda. So this is another trait of a wicked man. They have no regard for unity. But church, in verse 15, Solomon then gives a very serious warning for these types of people. People who plan out evil in their heart. Verse 15, Solomon gives a very serious warning. He says, Therefore, calamity will come upon him suddenly. In a moment, he will be broken beyond repair. Now, Solomon is saying here that the end of this worthless person, at the end of this wicked man's life, kung mamusulti si Solomon, kanusta, it could be pwede dayon-dayon or pwede diha pa sa skina or many years from now. But Solomon says, their end will come suddenly, without warning. Just like that, their ruin will come. And nakapait pagid ani, Solomon says, they will be broken beyond Repair. There's no turning back. There's no turning back. Now, guys, when I was younger, I wanted to be rich. No? As in, not just rich, rich, rich big time. So that's why I idolized the gambling lords, the smugglers, the big time gamblers. Because I've seen their life. I mean, hayay, man kay sila. No? Di gumateguhang ang mga naong ba? So I told my sister, Teh, magsmuggler ko. Magsmuggler na lang ko. So she told me, go ahead. Yes, you can become rich. I have no doubt. Madato mag ka if you do that. Then she told me, but let me tell you, usara kasakit, sa gi- usara kasakit ang ihatag sa ginoo ni mo. You will lose everything that you work for. Pwede ka ma-stroke and you become vegetable. Pwede ka tagaag cancer that all your money would be spent on your medicine. Pwede ka tagaan o saan lang yung kasakit? And everything will be gone. And this can happen to those people who always plot evil in their heart. Destruction can come upon them without warning. No turning back. No turning back. And when Solomon says, God's wrath or God's punishment will come upon them be on repair. Meaning to say, there's no reversal to what will happen to them. Di na mabawi ba? Kung maputlan o tiil, sagin, oh, maputol lang yun ang tiil. No, if you're gonna be vegetable, then you will be vegetable. Now friends, let us be wise and heed the counsel of Solomon. Because according to the wisest man who ever lived on the planet, this is what awaits to those people who continually plan wickedness in their heart. Okay? Now, guys, how serious is this thing? Unsam ni serious ang mga butang atong gitunan karon. Now, let's go further to verse 16 to 19. Can we read verse 16 to 19? 16 says, there are six things that the Lord hates, seven that are an abomination to Him. Ingon si Solomon na ay mga butanga masuko gud ang ginoo. Seven nga magdumot gud ang ginoo, no? Lain man ang masuko, lain man ang magdumot, manggigil sa kasuko. No? Can you imagine the King of Glory, the God who created the heavens and the earth, magdumot sa kasuko? Can you imagine that? Do you want God to feel like this towards you? Nga manggigil ang ginoo sa kalagot. 
Now, what are these six things? What are these seven things? Verse 17, haughty eyes. Now, what's a haughty eye? Haughty eye is kind of you look down on other people. Kind of proud kay ka ba? Kung sabi ni saya pa, uh, taas kay ka pananaw sa imo galingon. You exalt yourself above people. Haughty eyes, oh, kamo, gamay na mga tao ako, ngilingig kay ko. In other words, proud person, a person full of pride. Lying tang, bakakun. A hands that shed innocent blood. Verse 18. A heart that devises wicked plans. Katong gisulti na to ganina, nga giplano ang sala. No? Ganang, ugma, mamiktima ko, or ugma, magpakyot ko aning nga chicks. No? Ganang giplano, premeditated sins, sins that had been cherished in the heart. So, I'm going to say, feet that make haste to run, that makes haste to run to evil. Kanang tao nga, ganahan yung kayo mabuhat o sala, after other sala. No, that walay yung dili na mapugnan sa konsensya. Their conscience is so callous that sige, sala ng sala lang sala, they go on that kind of, the Lord hates this kind of lifestyle. Then verse 19, a false witness who breathes out lies and one who sows discord among brothers. Now guys, the Lord hates these types of sin. And if we are wise, you don't want to live such like such a person, right? You don't want to invite God's anger and God's wrath over your life, right? You don't want to be broken beyond repair. You don't want that. So church, as we end today's sermon, I want us to reflect on the wise words of Solomon that we have learned this afternoon. Now, maybe some of you here, some of you here, maybe you're struggling with pride. Maybe there's an issue in your life, prevailing issue in your life right now that you need to humble yourself. I don't know what that is, but somehow, there is just in you, taas ka imong pride ba? Di ka makahumble sa imong self? Di ka makapasailo someone? Or di ka makapangayo o pasailo towards someone? Or maybe some of you here, you are overcoming, I mean, you are struggling with sin. And no matter what you do, you just feel nga, no matter what effort I give, no matter what, no matter how I avoid this sin, somehow you just could not overcome that sin. Or maybe some of you here, you can relate to the sluggards. You feel that your life is messed up, your life, you feel that your life is disorganized. You feel that your life is, you know, very unproductive. Well, friends, we have the Word of God. Now, in verse 1 of what we studied, Solomon warned us never to guarantee for anyone's debt, right? Because it can potentially ruin us. But church, 2,000 years ago, how many of you know that there is that one person who guaranteed to pay the debts that you can never pay, to pay the debt that I can never pay. 2,000 years ago, the King of glory, the only begotten Son of God, Jesus Christ, He stepped out of His throne. He is perfectly worshipped in heaven, but yet He came to earth. Why? Because He wants to guarantee to pay for my debts, to pay for your debts, to pay for our debts, to pay for our sins at the cross of Calvary. He was nailed at the cross. Why? So that your sins and my sins can be paid for. So that we can heed the advice of Solomon to live a wicked lifestyle.